It's Milky Way season, which means you can shoot the Milky Way with nothing but a DSLR camera, wide angle lens, and a tripod. Let's go. So I'm up here at Cape Byron, the easternmost point of Australia, and I'm going to uh, switch cameras now because my normal YouTube video camera is great, but it's also the one I use for Milky Way shots. So I'm gonna switch to the iPhone, and the audio quality is gonna get worse, and the uh, visual quality is gonna get worse, but we've gotta do it. And this is my lighting assistant, Zen, and uh, he's gonna be helping me this evening. Hi. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is put your camera into manual mode if you haven't already uh, and point it at a bright star. Now I can see there's a bright star up there but I can also see some ships on the horizon too so we're going to use that. Uh, pump up the ISO, it's 3200 at the moment and change the aperture as far down or as open as you can go. Uh, now this one goes to 2.8 but then we're going to stop it back a bit. I'm actually going to put it up here to about 3.5. That's going to reduce some of the coma on the edge of our, uh, of our images there. And we're going to do some test shots. And for test shots, we're going to put it down to about 8 seconds. Because we just want to, before we do our deep exposures, we just want to see that we've got it framed right and all that sort of thing. Now this is purposefully out of focus. I can see some bright ships out on the horizon here. You can probably see the lighthouse beam above us sweeping across the sky as well. Uh, there are some bright stars out there too. So I'm just going to zoom in using the live view of the camera. Zoom in to these ships. And this, this will work on a bright star as well. But uh, we'll just tighten up the focus here. And I'll just zoom back out again. And you can see now that we've actually got some star detail here too. So I'm going to zoom into these stars up here. And we can use those as our um, focus. So I'm going to use the live view to zoom right in 10 times. This uh, 6D and the 70D have this great zoom feature you can just flick around on. And you can see if I go out of focus, it's quite bad. We want to pull it into focus to as fine a point as you can see go past then back up back again and that should be about right now you might not know where the Milky Way actually is if that's the case you can use an app to sort of work it out but if you do have your bearings generally you could try this just uh, point it east west or straight up because the Milky Way is either going to be east west or straight up just like the Sun and everything else along the ecliptic it rises in the east and sets in the west so once you've got it, in my case I'm just pointing due east, as I said, um, shooting off the easternmost cape. Once you've got it to that point, you can take a test exposure with these settings. Now also, if possible, you want to be using one of these remote switches. Um, your, depending on your camera brand, you can have a different kind of switch. Some of them are infrared, some of them are wide. I like the wide kind, and they'll basically just have a um, button that you can push, and that will take the exposure, which is what we're going to do now. Now if we preview that, we can see some traces of the Milky Way up here in the middle, along with some clouds. It's still pretty bright here at night. But the other thing is uh, our horizon's not really quite straight. So I'll make some adjustments and then try another test shot. Okay, so the test shot looks okay, but we do have some clouds over. So I've increased my shutter speed to the full 30 seconds, which is possible because my lens is so wide. If your lens isn't that wide, you want to try a lot less than that so depending on how long it is you know, if you got if you're using a telephoto lens this isn't going to work you need to use a as wide as possible lens so um, 30 is great if you got on a nearly fisheye kind of lens that sort of wide but anything less try with 20 try with 10 seconds and as long as that aperture is open up as far as it goes uh, and then stop back a bit if you want to avoid some coma our ISO is at 3200 you might want to stop that down to 1600 depending on how noisy your camera is so we'll take an exposure now and see what happens. A few moments later. Okay, you know it helps if you can uh, memorize your your camera's buttons in the dark. 
when you get familiar with your camera, you can just sort of use it in the dark. The touch screen on the uh, on 6D Mark II really helps. But you can see there, I've got the uh, Milky Way poking through the clouds here, and I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to take uh, two or three more. Okay, I think we got the shot. I'm speaking into my shirt here because I'm trying to use my shirt as a um, windbreak against the, the hissing wind here. But what I've done is, even though I've got the shot on a single frame, I usually take about three or four of exactly the same shot because then you can stack them and that removes a lot of that ISO noise that you get too. So even if you pump it up to 3200, 6400, you can then stack that. And I do have a separate video on how you do that, uh, which I'll link at the end of this video and in the description below. So in the end, the clouds didn't do me any favors for that shot. However, I was at that exact same spot with Dr. Zen the night before and we took the exact same photo. So I can show you the end result. Remember to watch my other video about how to stack foregrounds and backgrounds separately so that you can get a nice clean noiseless image without the foreground or the background stars trailing. And I'll catch you later.